the armor of God, part one, the restoration of truth. I read to you a quote from a word that the Lord spoke through a kingdom forerunner. Prepare, prepare, says the Lord, for it is the day of the Lord's preparation. For I would have my people prepare themselves for that which is coming. For does a man go into battle without preparation? Does an athlete engage in a contest without training? I say to you, if you do not let me prepare you for that which is coming, you will surely not be able to stand. But how shall we be prepared, you ask? Let me do a work in your life which has never been done before, for I am able, says God, to take you to myself and prepare you as a vessel which shall be used of me and which shall show forth my glory. But first you must be willing. You must be willing to submit yourselves to me in everything, yes, in every detail of your life. For I will take you and remold you and make you a fit vessel to contain that which is necessary to withstand in this evil day all of the onslaughts of the enemy. Therefore, my people, let me prepare you, says the Lord. End of quote out of that word. It seems that most Christian people are ignorant that the enemy walks about like a roaring lion seeking to devour, for it is not is it not written in Ephesians 4.27, neither give place to the devil. 2 Corinthians 2.11, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Scripture instructs us to be strong in the Lord, but how can we find our strength in God when we don't make the effort to know God as our strength? Can we find our strength in God if we don't spend much time in His presence? Can we find or even understand that the Lord desires to be the strength of His people when we keep doing our own thing and going our own way? Does He not instruct His disciples to follow Him in the road of the cross to the end of themselves? Ask any one of the true followers and disciples of the Lord that is in the stripping process of the work of the cross where you find the true strength of God. For it's only when we realize our own inability and weaknesses that His strength is made perfect and realized. Romans 13, 12 The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day being alert and awake, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, but in st not in strife and envying th through rebellion against God, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the last day of. And this is a beautiful scripture. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. How do we put on the Lord Jesus Christ? As we spend time with God in His Word and we see the different facets and aspects of His Word, we need to ask Him as the potter to work the substance of His truth into our vessels, into our hearts, into our minds, and to transform us and change us systematically through a process and a journey and a walk of spiritual growth until we reflect Him, until we look like Him, until we speak like Him, and until we do like Him. Putting on the Lord Jesus Christ, because the Holy Spirit, through an obedient, humble, willing heart, prays the Scriptures 
It's important when you see the truth in the word and you realize that this is what you read is lacking in your life. You ask the Holy Spirit to build it into you, to change you until you become what you see in the word, until you reflect Christ. Christ. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, we receive from Him. For the flesh is the ground through which Satan finds a foothold within our lives. Man sins because he yields himself to that which the old self wants and desires. We are commanded to yield our members as instruments unto righteousness, which means doing the right thing according to the likeness and image of Christ, being strengthened by the virtues, the fruits and divine attributes of God's Spirit dwelling in us as new creations. Romans 6 verse 12, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. And this is an interesting scripture. Do not let sin reign in your mortal body. So there's a throne in the mortal body. Satan rules through the flesh. Satan rules man through his flesh, his old nature, his fallen nature, the old man that belongs to the order of the rebellion of this world, to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Let not therefore let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. So the throne of Satan operates through the flesh and that must be our cry of repentance through the work of the cross not just unto salvation but father dethrone sin in me dethrone sin in my flesh so that you can reign in and over every part of my life that you should obey that, that we should obey it in its lusts do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof because it's a stronghold the flesh is a stronghold that must be broken down and only God can do it neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin but yield yourselves to God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. And this comes forth like a dance. We learn to yield to the Lord's guidance. Guidance, God and I dance. So where there's strongholds, especially through pain and brokenness, even mental disorders, even fragmentations of the human soul, because all of us come through various aspects of trauma and abuse that we have suffered through life. And we get hurt because we're in a spiritual battle. We get afflicted. We get offended. Our hearts get broken. We get confused. We get upset. We get hurt, we get abused. And these things form strongholds in our emotions. It, it, it forms and, and causes spiritual, emotional wounds. A stronghold, the place where the enemy, through a work of darkness, took a stronghold of us. And so we are like in a dance. I remember the Lord gave me a vision years ago. of a pot, the potter's hands of God coming out of heaven on a potter's wheel and we were like this vessel being molded as this potter's wheel was spinning in front of me. And he sees it as a dance of love through our brokenness, through our pain, through our weaknesses, through our shortcomings, through our imperfections. He looks through those things. He sees us as beautiful because in that he sees 
His need of us. And He causes us to realize through those things our need of Him. And that's being poor in spirit. Living in constant need of God. Lord, work change in me. Turn my perfections and my faults, my failures, my shortcomings and imperfections into your likeness, into your image. Set me free, deliver me, heal me, change me, transform me, disciple me, discipline me, equip me. And it's a beautiful thing because in this dance of yieldedness, yielding our members in the dance until he conquered us with his love, until we are conformed to his image and his likeness, it's like a dance in a potter's wheel. Until we are raised up as vessels of honor that can be filled with Christ, can be filled with the glory of God. And it says in Ephesians 6.10, Finally, my brethren, be be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the vials of the enemy. And you know what, Lord, I want to share interesting revelation and concept with you. He says in Romans 13, 14, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says in Ephesians 6, put on the, the armor of God. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the armor of God. Now, do you know that the armor of God is Jesus himself in us? empowering us if we go through the armor the helmet of salvation he is our light and our salvation our salvation is a person he is the belt of truth he is the way the truth and the life but that delivered by him as the truth him the sun sets free is free indeed you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free he is our truth He is our, 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 our righteousness, our breastplate. Our righteousness is Him. He is the one by His Spirit, Philippians 2, 12 and 13, the feet shot with a preparation. He makes us willing. He works in us to do and to will, mobilizing the church for the work of the ministry, to walk as Jesus walked and to spread the gospel wherever we are led by the Spirit, to whomsoever He inspires us to share our testimonies or a word or a blessing to bless someone or a miracle that God might want to work, even strangers to walk as Jesus walked, wherever we go, sons and daughters led by the Spirit, the feet shot with a willingness It's all out of Christ's spirit that operates through us. Because he's the ministry through yielded vessels. And then the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith, because our shield, our faith is in him. And he is the weapon of our warfare, the sword of the Spirit. It's being equipped with Christ. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the vials of the devil. And this is why God puts us in boot camp training as well. Like Paul said to Timothy, a good soldier of Jesus Christ. put on the whole armor of God not some of the armor the whole armor then we see the reason that you may be able to stand against the vials of the devil if we do not obey God's clear instructions in his word how then will we stand For to ignore and to disobey is rebellion that opens the door for the witchcraft power of Satan's kingdom to paralyze us and to lead us astray. 
It's the same as James 4 verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You can't resist the devil when you're in rebellion. He will laugh at you. There's an order. First submit yourself to God. It's a choice. Father, I submit in humility before you. I submit my will to you. I submit my life to you. I submit my heart to you. I submit my mind to you. Work in me. Change me. Conform me to your standard of righteousness. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Then resist the devil and he will flee from you. If we refuse to submit, then we have no power or authority against the devil. For the order of obedience is crystal clear. First submit to God, then resist. I remember our demon rebuked a child of God during a deliverance session many years ago because she had sin in her life. She was bound by nicotine spirit of addiction and she was trying to drive this spirit of addiction out of her ex-drug lord and the demon rebuked her and said to her get sin out of your life before you come and take me on you see she was in rebellion in that area she had no authority submit yourself to god resist the devil he will flee from you how can you command satan to obey when you yourself are taken captive by him it's like a prisoner trying to give orders to his jailers when he's the one who gave them the authority to lock him up in the first place. The fact that the Bible says we are not under law does not mean that we have the right to live lawless lives because it's God's truth and instructions that sets us free. His will for our lives. Because righteousness is everything as God says it and declares it to be. That is what righteousness is. God's way or no way. James 1.22 But be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You see, you can... Be so full of the head knowledge of, of, of Scripture, but if you don't live it out, it's meaningless because faith of what works is dead. And if what you see in the Word, you don't become a spiritual glutton or a parrot that just quotes Scriptures, you pray the Word of your life constantly. It's a very powerful, important thing. Lord, this that, that I'm reading in your word now, that this is which I, I'm listening to, if you listen to audio Bible, work it into me, conform me to the standard. That's the attitude that God wants in his people. That is humble submissiveness. That's will, a willing heart. Like the Lord said to me one day, Peter, the difference is you allowed me to, because he can be resisted through stubbornness and stubbornness is like idolatry because we place our will above God and yes it's a journey it's growth it's a process but we must be willing because if we look in the word like a mirror that talks to us and we see where we are lacking and we just, we spend time in the Word to soothe our guilty conscience or we do it out of obligation. I've read a few scriptures and now I'm okay. No, that's, we have to plunge ourselves into Christ. We have to plunge ourselves into the Word. We have to saturate ourselves in the Word. We have to eat Christ. He's the bread from heaven, the hidden manna, the unveiled Mysteries, like it says of him in Colossians 2, within whom are hidden the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. He's a treasure to be discovered, an infinite living treasure with infinite depths. You never arrive in God. I love to saturate myself in the Word as much as possible. 
For if anyone be a hearer of the word and not a doer, it's like a man beholding his natural face in a mirror. He beholds himself and goes his way and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. But whoever looks into the perfect word of God that brings liberty and continues there in the not being a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed indeed. You know, this flips back into or coincides with this foundation foundation parable in Mark chapter 4 where he climbs in a boat and there's a mass, massive uh, gathering of people around him, a great crowd, and that the Lord begins that teaching, the foundation parable of his teaching ministry with listen. And Jesus told me many years ago the greatest problem in the world and in the church is, is people hear them, but they don't listen. I remember years ago I was ministering in a home cell and the Lord showed me open vision how angels were walking around in the realm of the spirit and they had these buckets and they picked up these beautiful big precious stones, these gemstones. Like 1 Corinthians 3 declared the gold, the silver and the precious stones. Those are the hidden mysteries of Christ that the Holy Spirit wants to build into the bride until we reflect Him. His beauty, His glory. A bride decking herself with the jewels, like the scripture says in Isaiah. And then that and Jesus said to me, that, that truth of that those angels that you saw are my truth that these people rejected that's gonna testify against them in the judgment. We have to take God seriously. Because you treat a person, you show respect to a person, how you treat that word, how you treat their word. And I remember years ago, the Lord said to a person, the reason why many of my people don't believe my word is because they're not faithful to their own words. Religious ungodly interpretation of God's word is keeping multitudes today in prisons of bondage, of hopelessness and despair, because many think that to live under grace is a license to be lawless. The devil has done his work well in his subtlety and craftiness. You are under the law when you are a lawbreaker and a lawless disobedient person living in rebellion against the governing authorities. This is what gives Satan legal right in our lives. And this is why in Isaiah 60 he came to set the captives free to open the prison doors to release them that are bound because we're not under law anymore. So God says, I'm here to set you free from yourself. I'm here to set you free from your sinful bondage. I'm here to turn every weakness into strength. I'm your deliverer. I'm your healer. I'm your salvation. I'm your redemption. You know, I mean, being poor in spirit is a beautiful thing. Like years ago when Jesus said to me, see all of your faults, your failures, your shortcomings, your weaknesses and imperfections as an outcry of desperation to God to intervene on your behalf because you are like a fish on dry ground without my spirit operating in your life. He wants dependence because... Our brokenness draws him and he sees us as beautiful because he looks at us through the eyes of love. And he loves us perfectly unto wholeness through a work of transition and supernatural transformation, spiritual growth and change. We grow out of our weaknesses. Like years ago, the father said to me, it's time that you see me as a father that loves you, as a God who's gracious upon your life. Not a God who's there to look every time you make a mistake. I'm a God who created man and I understand the weaknesses inside of you. But as you confess those weaknesses, I will give you the ability to grow out of them. 
as we feed on the word, like First Peter 2 says, craving the sincere milk of the word, and then we go on to maturity, from a baby to a developing child, and eventually into an adult, and we grow out of our weaknesses. And He loves us the same through the whole process. And it's not a performance thing. It's not about matching up. It's about growing up. As we go through stages and seasons, like He declares our life and our growth and our relationship with God in someone like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth fruit in season. And don't seek fruit out of season because fruits speaks of maturity. The fruits of the Spirit is the life of Christ that's fully developed in the life journey of the born-again seed. And we all begin as a born-again baby seed until we grow into spiritual maturity, fruitfulness. When a Okay, then he says, The Father is releasing His sons, the spiritual governors of Judah, to restore truth to the church, the Zion and dwelling place of God. God the Father spoke to me and said, Many pastors are like zookeepers today, who come on a Sunday to feed their monkeys peanuts, who sit bound behind the bars, of tradition and religion because they do not have the keys of truth and revelation and experience to unlock and open their cages because many preachers are in bondage to themselves. When I went to a mega church in the beginning 25 years ago, a Bible school international church for six and a half years and I never heard the, true, the, the full gospel. They just preach salvation, boom, we produce spiritual babies and then we keep them in their cages. And no man can lead you where God has not taken them. So God's coming through the end time sons of God, the man child, mature man. That knows the way to Zion. Because we've not just been saved by the cross, we've also been slain by the cross. We didn't just follow Jesus to the cross and to salvation. We took up our cross and we pursued him into his mountain. Like David says in Psalm 24, <clears throat> Excuse me, you may ascend the mountain of God. Who may stand in the tabernacle of the Holy One. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not lift up his soul to vanity. And that's fleshly vanity. Because like he declares in Romans 8, the, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Because they stop an emotional babies that only wanted their way. And we have to learn to grow up. To leave the stage of babyhood where we camp on salvation. Because salvation is not the Alpha and Omega of the Gospel. After that we are admonished by the Father as He calls out of His mountain. In Isaiah 57, this is what the High and the Lofty One says. He who inhabits eternity, I live and dwell in a high and a holy place. But also with him that is of a broken spirit and a humble heart. And it's a journey into that mountain. And God showed me on the mountain he places a throne, a crown and a mantle. And we are called to grow into it. Because his kingdom is not for babes or toddlers, but for those who have been brought to maturity. There are many false teachings in the ch churches today. And God's going to come through his sons and confront the false foundations. I saw that through an open vision. And so it shall be realized, like the Father said to me years ago, this end time awakening shall also be known as the time of the awakening of truth. is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, and not in the letter, the tablets of stone, 
given to Moses, whose praise is not of men but of God, because it's a ministry of the spirit of inward transformation and growth. Jeremiah 30 verse 7, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off your neck and will burst your bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. But they shall serve the Lord their king, God, and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. Therefore fear you not, O my servant Jacob. Here in the walk, we are in the form of God.